Welcome to model steam engines and boilers and this one is part 34. Marking out and drilling the steam chest cover. This video is a trailer for my how to build a model steam engine series that is for my Patreon supporters. And what you're about to see is one of the episodes which is heavily edited. The full length episodes from this series contain much more detail. The reason that I can produce a high quality video almost every day is down to my Patreon supporters it would be impossible to do this without the help that I receive from my patrons. Thank you. How to build a model steam engine part 16 and in this episode I'm going to show how to mark out the steam chest cover and after drilling the holes in the steam chest cover I'm also going to drill the holes in the steam chest itself. You may be thinking why have I got a replica of a Roman gladius sword on the workbench? This is a very sharp Roman gladius sword. So sharp in fact I'm sharpening my pencil. I'm going to use this sword to unbox this very useful workshop tool that I've bought. I've cheated a bit, I unboxed it first because I didn't want to smash it to pieces with this sword. I bought this excellent reproduction gladius sword from a company in England called Southern Swords. And I paid extra to have it sharpened because I've always been curious as to what a sword is like when it's really sharp. You see people in films running about with swords but when they're as sharp as this one, you really have to be careful you don't take your own leg off. It's so sharp it was very easy to stick it in the workshop door. That's it about swords, it's time to get on with the episode. This is what was inside the box before I destroyed it with the sword. It's a table vise. And as you can see, it swivels. It's surprisingly heavy. And the good thing about it is I don't need to use the suction base because it sits on the bench fine as it is. Buying this vice for the job that I want it for is way overdue. I've always had a problem marking out pieces of metal. You hold the scriber in your right hand, you hold the ruler in your left hand, so what holds the work? Nothing, just the pressure of the ruler or whatever on top of it. And what usually happens when I'm marking out is I get everything ready, I put the ruler on the work and make little marks, I place the ruler on the two marks and scribe a line. And then I look at the job and I think, why did the line wander off the marks? And that's because the pressure of the scriber moved the piece of metal underneath the ruler. But now that is a thing of the past. All I do is clamp the piece of metal in this small vise that's just sat on the bench. I can move it around just where I want it because it's not fixed to the bench and it's heavy enough to stay where you put it. So here, as you can see, the scribing of the lines becomes a much easier process. This is just marking out on a scrap piece of brass, but very shortly I'll be using this vise to mark the positions for the holes on the steam chest cover of the Stuart Models Victoria steam engine. And here is the steam chest cover, and here is also the steam chest cover after coating it in marking out blue. The next part of the job is to use a small centre drill to pilot the holes in the very centre of the marks that I've made on the steam chest. I've always used this cross vise on my drilling machine because I don't like holding pieces of metal in my hand and it seems to be much more convenient than a normal machine vise because I don't have to keep moving it around. All of the drilling operations through the steam chest cover and the steam chest and down into the cylinder block itself must be carried out using a tapping size drill for a 7BA stud. I used a 2mm drill bit for this, it should be 2.1 I do believe but I don't think I have one of those. Back on the bench and this is the top surface of the steam chest cover and this is the steam chest. The next part of the operation is to stick the cover to the steam chest itself and for this I'm using some Loctite 638 although you could use 603. You need to make sure that this cover does not come loose at any time in the drilling process so make sure that you have an even covering on both surfaces. Position the parts carefully and then use four spring clamps to hold the steam chest cover to the steam chest until the Loctite has cured. Don't put too much pressure on the drill bit, give it time to cut the hole. In the final part of this video, I'm going to now stick the steam chest to the main cylinder. And in the same way as great care was taken to align the steam chest cover with the steam chest, even greater care needs to be taken with the port face block on the cylinder itself. All I need to do now is just wait until the next episode and hopefully by that time the Loctite 638 will have cured. 
I think I'd better remove my sword that's stuck in the workshop door before the postman inadvertently decapitates himself as he delivers the mail. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.